Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. This is episode number 42. 42. Brian Lurg. Oh yeah. Uh, Joe Ward. Yeah. I'll go back to Lurg. Yeah, no, favorite. Lurg was a fan favorite, man. That guy had uh, eight NHL games. Eight. Scored a goal, game winner. A goal. A goal. A goal. Hey, every little helps. Living the life, man. <laughs> Living the dream. So this episode, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the Sharks slump most recently. Uh, Martin Jones, a very hot topic oh, among yes. people online. <laughs> and we'll also be talking about the Week in Review and what's coming up. So you ready to start the show? Ready. Whosoever holds this microphone, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Paul. So uh, I'm actually, I'm a little upset with you. I, I am so far behind on the Marvel movies that it's wow. like, it's not even worth getting into them because they're so far behind. I've seen about half. You, if you've them. seen half, this is in the first, what, and three? I've seen Four? zero Thor movies. Oh my goodness. I have to pick and choose, man. The life of two kids. I don't know what to, I have two kids. I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. Your kids are a little older. <laughs> anyway. Um, so I just wanted to point one thing out on the set real quick. We did uh, get the uh, fighting Joe Thornton bobble in. Um, there's a chunk of the beard missing. It looks awesome. I love it. And then I had the uh, guarding the net um, Jones bobble that I decided to bring in. I don't even me, know so. what that's about. I don't really either. It was just a Marvel thing, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to explain it that's then. That's joking. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's what I have to deal with. Anyway, uh, there's other thing we want to talk about was uh, Joe Pavelski uh, goal watch. There is no Joe Pavelski goal watch because he was out and about. Single tier. Does yeah. this mean he's not going to get to 40? It might. That's a shame. I don't know what his injury is. I don't know how bad it's going to be. But yeah. This completely makes us look foolish <laughs> for saying, <laughs> me personally, saying that he's going to get over his 41. Thanks for nothing, Joe. Thanks for nothing, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so we'll jump right in. So uh, the Sharks did not do that great this week. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the actual games. But, um, yeah, quite a quite a bit of a slump right now. Six in a row. A bit. A bit. Just a bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's a lot going on with the Sharks. And, and there's a lot going on with the Sharks online with a lot of people on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, you name it. Uh, people are roasting them and think that they're going to get swept in the first round yeah. to not making playoffs. Well, not not making playoffs, but losing the seed, the home ice right. seed. So, um, sure, if they continue down this trend of losing, that could happen. But I don't. We don't think that's going to happen. I don't, I, they're not going to end the season on a huge losing streak. Hopefully, right? But I, I don't know. I, <laughs> we don't know. We're not. <laughs> we're not we can't tell the You're the one with well. the magic crystal ball on your right. head there. So, I yes. mean, for me, I don't know. I just don't think that it matters so much as much as people put weight into it. I think I'm just like a, you know, a normal everyday fan, just like you guys. I want to see them win because I'm a fan of the Sharks. Does that mean that it's a death sentence that if we don't get some wins going into? No, it doesn't, right? Um, no. I don't know. I just I just feel like there's it's still regular season. Again, uh, the whole cliche playoffs are a different season and it's a different animal. And I get that, but people were really upset this week because for one, it was Vegas yeah. that we lost to, and we got killed. Then it was L.A. and Anaheim who were at the bottom of the standings, and people are upset because we should be slam yeah. dunk wins, right? Well, Paul Gackle had a tweet out, and this he says it absolutely perfectly, and I'm just we're gonna throw it up on the screen here. Um, he says, also in regards to this losing streak, I know that the Sharks wouldn't make excuses, but I can. I don't know many teams out there that can lose a two-time Norris winner, a 37-goal scorer, a World Cup-level two-way center, and a Wookiee whisperer and not be impacted. <laughs> That's the issue. Uh, beautifully said, Paul. That's great. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I, wrong, Paul. Okay. And um, <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, this week was pretty rough for the Sharks in terms of, um, I mean, you lose four guys, essentially, yeah. Um, maybe not in one week, but in the last two weeks. Your your lineup has changed. If we had the lineup that we had three weeks ago, healthy, uh, or even say a month ago if Carlson was back, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think most of these teams really stand a chance, and I feel like that's what they're going for in the playoffs. I think right now the Sharks know that they're going to be playing Vegas. They know that they're going to be wanting to be healthy. Rather than playing all these guys and trying to get to the yeah. division banner, right? Yeah. Which I think is a useless <laughs> banner to put in the rafters. Um, and sure, you want to be ahead of Calgary and you want to you want to face somebody else yeah. and not not Vegas, but uh, it's just not really in the cards and the, and the guys aren't healthy. I think the rest is more important than being first in the West or first in the Pacific, mm -hmm. you know, either way, even if Winnipeg were to jump up. 
I think the rest is more important. I think, you know, with Eric Carlson being out, right? If he gets the rest that he needs and he comes back and he's healthy, I think we're in really good shape. I think if you try to rush him back to try to win some, like you said, useless banner on the rafters, um, you're just going to hurt yourself in the long run. So it doesn't really make sense to me to try to rush these guys back, to really push those guys uh, you know, to, to, to come back and play at such a high level. I think let's just give them the opportunity to, to get their bodies healthy and ready to go for the postseason because, again, that's the that's the season that matters. Right. And and I'm going to throw this up on the screen, too. This shows the percentage that who the Sharks are going to play in the mm-hmm. first round, right? And I got this off of The Athletic. And um, <laughs> 93% chance, and this is as of yesterday, <laughs> Saturday, that uh, Vegas and the Sharks are going to be... be playing against each other in the first round, right? right? Don't think the Sharks don't know this. They, <laughs> I think they understand that, okay, a couple losses here, we're on a little skid. Yeah. Now we kind of, we're not going to be getting that first place, so now we know who we're going to play. Vegas is kind of doing the same thing. They already know they're not moving up or down, so they're going to be playing the Sharks, yeah. most likely. Um, either the Sharks or Calgary was kind of their two options. So, um, rest your guys. Pavelski, I'm sure, could play. Yeah, I mean, he had an Ironman streak going, right, for mm-hmm. a long time. So um, he lost that Ironman streak, but for a good thing. I'd rather have a 100% healthy Pavelski, which he wasn't last year against Vegas, a 100% rested Evander Kane, who wasn't yeah. last year, right. um, and Carlson not re-injuring his groin and mm-hmm. being able to play. And the Wookiee Whisperer. The Wookiee Whisperer. He's not going to come <laughs> back, unfortunately. I know. And, and that's a shame because he really did add so much to making Brent Burns the player that Brent Burns is or allowing him to be the player that he is, right? Mm-hmm. We all know how much skill Brent Burns has, but, you know, there's times where he's playing t- a lot of defense and he's not able to, you know, jump that play up and, and have a reliable partner. And we kind of see it right now with Joachim Ryan trying to play alongside Brent Burns. And it just hasn't really felt right. You know, maybe in, in season past it, it was doing okay, but. So far, what I've seen, it just it hasn't really worked. Yeah, and it's so odd because he looked so good last year mm-hmm. paired up with him. And I remember Sharks fans being upset when Ryan wasn't in the playoff game against Vegas and they had played Paul Martin. Yeah. And Paul Martin got burned on that overtime goal by Carlson, William Carlson. Right. And um, that was unfortunately Paul Martin's last shift <laughs> in the NHL, that poor guy. So um, what happened to... to Ryan, Joachim Ryan, is mm-hmm. just not the same person or not the same player that he was. Um, or maybe he just didn't improve and everyone else did. Um, it's kind of odd. It's, yeah. it's very odd. And it puts the Sharks in a bad spot, unfortunately. I think there's a lot to be said for the mental side of that game, right? You've got Schmidt comes in out of nowhere, leapfrogs both Ryan and Heed. And then when it comes down to, you know, Schmidt's out, we need to play one of you two guys or both of them at, at one point. But when they had to pick one, they picked Heed. And so I think that has a lot to do with the mental side of that game. You, you know, Yoakum had been playing pretty well up until the point where they basically pulled him out for Paul Martin to come mm-hmm. back in. And here he is getting leapfrogged now. So I don't know I'm, if that's, you know, again, a mental part of it where, you know, it's it's kind of a bummer for him. Yeah. You know, and you can't let that stuff get you down. But maybe in this case it did. And it's we're seeing it now. And maybe we'll see Middleton or DeSimone. DeSimone, yeah. I would love to see. I'd love to see them next week or two uh, since the Sharks have about two, three weeks left right in the season, uh, get a couple games in. That'd be nice to get something in there to see if they have any chemistry with any of those guys, um, see what they got, uh, because there could be another injury. No, you've got got seven games left, and you want to have an opportunity to see these guys and what they can offer you and who they pair up well with. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if anything else, just at least having them in the practices, you call them up to practice with the big club. Right. You know, get a good look at them at least and see what they're capable of, because if something does happen, you have another guy go down, because we said this in the live, and if you're not part of the live, please do subscribe and, and hit the bell so you get the notifications when we're going live. Because it's a lot of fun. It's one of the topics that we had. Right. Normally, normally we do the lives on Sunday night at 9.30 p.m. Pacific time. Yeah. Um, so please catch us. We have we had somebody from Finland this last episode. It's yeah. 6.30 in the morning in Finland. Yeah. And they said hello. So hello from Finland. From I don't know how to say hello in Finnish, but... Auto? Okay, sure. Why not? We're just making up as we're going along. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I think, you know, again, for Ryan, there's that whole mental side of it. Um, I think he's played really well alongside Vlasic. Mm. It's unfortunate that Schmidt can't step in. We were talking about this during the live. This is where I was going with it was, you know, maybe it makes more sense to have like 27 defensemen even um, and then have, you know, 
your two guys on the fourth line being Melker Carlson and maybe Barclay Goodrow or maybe Michael Haley, one or the other. And then that way, if you do have an injury, you slot a guy straight in because how many times have we had injuries in the middle of a game? We had to play it with five guys left on the bench. So you're talking about during the playoffs. Or you're talking about the rest of the season. I would say maybe even just not the rest of the season, but at least in a few games in the season, you know, add a guy Try there. It out, kind yeah, of. give it a go. I mean, the worst thing that happens is you have an extra guy sitting on the bench. Look, in the playoffs, I have a feeling Pete DeBoer is not going to roll four lines. He's going to roll three lines, and he's going to let that fourth line go out in some situations. Yes, but I really feel like you're going to roll just those top three, and even then, if you want to play Melker Carlson, Barclay Goodrow, just throw him with another another center. Mm-hmm. I mean, really. I mean, that's kind of how I see it. Whichever guy's not getting enough ice time at the time, throw him with the fourth line guys, let him go out there. Or a winger that's not getting enough ice time. Either of those other guys, Barclay or Melker, they can both play centers. They can yeah. take a face off. Yeah. So, I don't know. I think it there's some some things that you can kind of do flexibly there and allow uh, you know a seventh defenseman on the bench, a, a guy to get some playing time to see what he can do. Because, again, we've only got seven games left. Mm-hmm. If you have to plug one of these guys in during playoffs, you're going to want to know what they're able to do right? before you have to plug them in. Yeah. So. Going back to what we were talking about earlier oh, uh, about no, it's okay. The the losing streak, kind of going into the playoffs with the losing streak. Uh, the at the game or listening to the game, watching the game uh, the other night, Randy Hahn had a great, um, I don't know, a little excerpt. Yeah, yeah excerpt yeah. where last season the Ducks and the Sharks played in the first round. The Ducks finished the season nine one and one. They were one of the hottest teams going into the playoffs, and the Sharks were. I'm going to pull up these stats right now. The Sharks were, uh, what were they, one and four and one in their last, uh, what was that, six, six games. Yeah. And there was talk that the Ducks were going to walk all over the Sharks and, and because they were the hot team and the Sharks were kind of stumbling in the playoffs and weren't doing so hot. And look what happened. You remember? <laughs> what Sweet. happened? Sweet. Sweet. Get out those brooms. You got it. <laughs> Sharks swept <laughs> the Ducks. They made them look silly. They made them look like a very old and slow team, which they were and are. And they are. <laughs> right. <laughs> so... Um, I'm not too focusing on the losing streak, especially going into playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, what we've been talking about in the live and, and just now is we want a full, healthy team going into that first round. Right. 94% of it chance against the Vegas Knights. Yeah. Do the Vegas Knights worry you? I mean, I, okay, yes. Not saying, right. I mean, the, any any team, look, at here's the thing. Any team like, like us, we're going on a losing streak. We jump in, playoffs are a different animal, right? So there's nothing saying that any team that we play, Minnesota, right? They catch a win streak during the playoffs, watch out. You know, if they start feeling it, watch out. But in in terms of specifically the Golden Knights, do they worry me? I mean, they worry me about as, as much as any other team that we could possibly face are going to worry me. But uh, yeah, they've got our number. They've had our number. What They've only been there for a season. So how much can they really have our number? There's a, such a small sample size of games. And yes, they've beaten us in, in a fair amount of those. But I don't know. I feel like you said last season with playoffs, it's kind of hard to say, oh, they, they they smoked us because we had some injuries to our key players. Right now we have injuries to key players, and that's kind of what it is that worries me. And it's not the, the team that we're facing, any team that we're facing. The thing that worries me the most is ourselves. I'm, I'm more worried about what the team is going to do, not what the team's the other team is going to do to us. Right. Right. So I, I'm. I want to see a healthy Eric Carlson. I want to see a healthy Joe Pavelski. I want to see. You know. I, I would love to see Shane back, but it ain't gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> right. But I, I want to see these guys. You know, playing healthy. And if we can do that, then I think we could beat anybody. However, in the current state of the Sharks, yeah, I'm. A, I'm a little worried going into the playoffs. Not necessarily going into the playoffs against Vegas. Right. So that's my take on it. I think. I think a healthy Sharks. Yeah. Carlson, Pavelski, Couture. Um, there's no shimmick. Yeah, yeah, there's no <laughs> shimmick. Uh, them going into the first round healthy, I think, is going to overwhelm the Vegas Knights. I think the Sharks are... I'm not saying the Sharks are going to sweep them. It's not going to be like against the Ducks last year. Uh, but I do think that the Sharks hold an edge over Vegas. Mm-hmm. Obviously, look at the standings. Granted, they didn't have Stone and they didn't have... Who was the other one that they got? Um I forget, but stone, stone Stone being the main addition there. Right. Stone's a, you know, he's a goal-scoring machine. That right. Guy, so. uh, I just... I don't... I mean, the teams are very different from what they were last year when they played each other. So, um, similar but not completely the same. Yeah. So, I, I think I, we saw Vegas kind of stumble this year. Kind of look like an expansion team, right? Like, not really bad, but not sure. as elite as everyone thought they would be. They thought... I think a lot of people had picked Vegas to... Other than Mike Johnson. Yeah. Pick <laughs> Vegas to win the division. Um, 
And Marc Andre Fleury is dealing with a lower body injury. Yeah. Who knows what that is? Mm -hmm. uh, without Marc Andre Fleury, they really are not as scary. I know the sh I know they just beat the Sharks, but without Marc Andre Fleury, but still, um, I I just don't. I'm not too scared. So here's here's the thing that we've said a few times now, and something that you brought up. Can we beat this team in a seven game series? Right now, I think that we can, even with Marc Andre Fleury. Do you think that Vegas is going anywhere with Malcolm Subban and Net in a seven game series? No. I don't think so. I mean, that's uh, that's no. the way I see it. I don't, if that's the guy that they've got net, and that's the guy that they're calling upon, he is getting better. That's but I great. Don't think I not mean, in a seven game take, series. What team would have their backup win in a seven game series? Yeah, but that's my point. Right. It doesn't matter how you got there. It's the fact that you're in that situation. And maybe Just like Mark, us, Mark Andre Fleury, I'm sure, is going to start regardless if he's 100 percent healthy or not. Maybe he won't be healthy. Yeah, 100 percent healthy. Sure. Maybe he has. Maybe he. Maybe he. Messed up his groin, right? Yeah, maybe it's tweaked. Could be not not pulled speculation. Anything, I mean, whatever. But I'm just yeah, saying, like, yeah. it could, especially for goalies. Those yeah, 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 are yeah, the yeah. worst. But um, maybe he's just not all there. So mm -hmm. who knows? Again, speculating. Yeah. Well, and a lot of this is pulled up a lot of fan emotional reaction stuff, yes. and <laughs> he want to just jump straight in. I just man, the just, sigh right there. He wants in. <laughs> it's <ahead>. ridiculous <laughs> the the amount of venom coming out from some of these fans is crazy. Um, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you shouldn't criticize the team. You right. shouldn't you shouldn't go against what they're doing. You shouldn't be mad. Yeah, be mad, be whatever, but be a little bit more civilized. Uh, <laughs> the name calling is ridiculous. You don't need to call Pete to board whatever names. I'm not even gonna say it. Um, and and these guys, like going back to the tweet from from uh, from Paul Gackle, like they're dealing with a lot in the last two weeks. Yeah. So uh, any other team, I think, would also be having this kind of losing streak, losing the players that they have. So um, just relax. This people are. I think more people are upset because they're not going to win the division. Yeah. Which is silly to me. Like, <laughs> yeah, they get an easier opponent, and they don't see the Sharks going all out to go get that easier opponent, which we just talked about. Yeah. So, um, relax a little bit. The Sharks are going to be okay. Uh, they're going to be adding a two-time Norris Trophy winning defenseman back on their team soon. Hopefully, um, yes. Yeah. I, I just... I think they need... I think people need to chill. I think yeah. I needed to take a break because I was getting into it a little bit on <laughs> Facebook. Uh, I think on Twitter a little bit, too. And I was yeah. just like, I need, I need to just... Just let it go. Um, I'm tired of defending and, <laughs> and whatever. I, however, am not tired of defending. So the right. next little segment here is about Martin Jones. And um, gosh, you know, there was just me going back and forth quite a bit on both Twitter and on Facebook. And, you know, I, I, every time I see a post where somebody says, you know, oh, Martin Jones is terrible. And I, you see Kevin Kerr saying, you no, know, that the tandem of Jones and Dell is 31st in the league, dead last in terms of goals save against percentage. average and save percentage and even strength save percentage. I, you know, honestly, like, it, I have a hard time just looking at just the save percentage and the goals against average, and there's no context behind any of that. And if you want to just call those numbers out and say we're the 31st in the league, okay, that's fine. Do that. But if you want a deeper understanding of that, then I think you need to dig deeper. And what if the Sharks are the first team ever to win a Stanley Cup with the 31st worst save percentage? Then that's something to put in the record books. It I could guess. happen, right? Sure. Like I'm just saying it could happen. Yeah. I, hey, anything can happen, right? Here's the thing. When you look at the number of high danger chances, and I'll go ahead and throw this stuff up on, on the screen too. When you look at the number of high danger chances, you got to see that Martin Jones has got the fourth most in the entire league. Um, I mean, a 477 HD shots against, that's high danger is what that means. And then if you look at poor John Gibson, this poor guy, he's got 559 high danger shots against. And I mean, he's he truly is elite though. If you look at his high danger save percentage at 844 and the uh, high danger goals saved above average is 14.15. So they should have scored 14 more goals on him than they actually did. But we're gonna look at uh, Martin Jones one more time here. And we're gonna see, you know, his, his high danger save percentage is uh, 811. And those uh, high danger goals saved to go over uh, above average is minus 3.69. That means he let in three and a half or so more goals than he should have, right? Um, then if you look at the very bottom there, you see Vasilevsky, and he's got 406 high danger chances, which is kind of far off, especially from John Gibson. But he's got, you know, he's 14th down on the list, or 15th down on the list, I think is what it is. And then you look at his percentage, 825. Now he's also making, you know, two 
he's not allowing two more, two and a half more goals per game. But the difference between Martin Jones and Vasilevsky in this case <laughs> for high danger save percentage is just 0.14. Right. That means over a thousand shots, he's going to save what 14, 14 more goals, yeah. <laughs> right? I, I, it's look. It's, there's there's a very slim line between elite and non-elite, I think, right? And y you're seeing it right there. Vasilevsky, in my opinion, yes, an elite goaltender. Martin Jones, not an elite goaltender, but put into situations where he you would want an elite goaltender. There's a lot of high danger uh, saves he's going to have to make there to try to bump those numbers up. Right. Otherwise, you're looking at the low danger and the medium danger stuff to kind of you know bolster the save percentage up and bolster the the goals against average. But when you're seeing so many high danger shots and you're not an elite level goaltender you're probably going to let a few of those extra ones in. So, I mean, I see that stat and I have a hard time with people saying, you know, oh, Martin Jones is terrible. Martin Jones sucks. He gives away a lot of soft goals, which, you know, we'll look in a second here on the medium danger stuff too. But even the low danger, they're pretty much the same across the league on most goaltenders for low danger stuff. So I don't really see a lot of soft goals. I see goals that people would like him to save, obviously, or they're, you know, situations that are very intense or they, they mean a whole heck of a lot, you know, and... Maybe he lets one go by, but I, I don't know. Again, he's not the elite goaltender that everyone seems to think that he ought to be. I, I think um, he, when he gets to playoffs, he, he usually steps up his game. But we saw Pete DeBoer call him out this week a little bit. Not like throwing him under the bus kind of calling right. him out. But he, he said he needs to make, or not he specifically, our goaltending, both because Dell was playing the other night, our goaltending needs to make that one or two extra saves right. that they're not getting. I mean, he only had, I think Dell only had five high danger chances and two of them were goals, mm -hmm. right? So um, I think the type of goalie that Jones is, he's he's not going to get many shutouts. He's not going to be super dominant, dominant, especially during the regular season. But what he does do is he keeps you close in games. You could be losing a game and he'll still come up with a key save or two where you, I mean, you listen to Randy, he goes, yeah. you should keep that save in yeah. mind yeah. for later in the game. And sure enough, the Sharks tie it and or go on to win it, and you go, wow, like Jones kept them in that game. Yeah. So, yeah, his save percentage is usually not great. His goals against average is not great, mm -hmm. but look at his wins. Yeah. How many wins does he have? <laughs> I don't even know, actually. We'll That's... probably put up a producer note for that. But, um, <laughs> my point, like, he does enough to get the win. Yeah. And, and help your team get into a position to win, especially such a high dangerous scoring team is the Sharks. Yeah, and, and and there's a reason that I pointed out, not so much John Gibson on that one, because for, for me, pointing out John Gibson was just, look at this poor guy. I mean, he literally has to do everything for this team. I mean, his his high danger save percentage is pretty good, but his team just can't score for him, and that's that's part of the, you know, the reason the Ducks are horrible this year, right? So, uh, but I did want to compare him to Jones, to Vasilevsky in this case, and I'll, I'll throw this one up on the screen as well. Uh, looking at not just the high danger, but also the medium danger chances, right? So in the high danger, we saw Vasilevsky had, what well, was like 14th on that list. On the medium danger, he's the top guy on the list in terms of chances seen. So he's seen 517 medium danger chances. I mean, and his save percentage is 938 on that as well. And I mean, his medium danger goals saved above average is ridiculous at 19. He, basically 20 goals should have gone in and he saved them, but they're all medium, right? Mm -hmm. And look at Martin Jones at the bottom of that list, he's, I think, what was it, like 14th on that list, maybe, I forget, 12th. Um, and he's only seen 404 medium danger shots. His is, um, save percentage is 894, and yes, he's led into again about two and a half more goals than he should have in the medium danger stuff. But the thing that I don't, I don't see on those stats is uh, screenshots, right? So it's things that, that are maybe medium in terms of the distance okay. away, but he can't see it. And so that's where I'm saying... You know, that's maybe the difference that we're seeing, not just from Vasilevsky to Jones, but from Tampa Bay to San Jose. Yeah. Right? You're seeing a lot of those shots coming from the medium danger areas for Vasilevsky. You're not seeing as many high danger shots for Vasilevsky. So what does that mean? Does that mean that he's somehow magically making them shoot farther away? <laughs> no, it means that the team is pushing them farther out, right? He's also seeing less uh, rebound shots. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. another stat that I happen to pull up there. But... Um, I'm just looking at the difference between the two, and I'm not saying that Martin Jones is the same as Vasilevsky. I'm saying that in Tampa Bay, you've got a team that's limiting the high danger chances and forcing the teams to take those shots from farther away. That's what my, my point is, mm -hmm. right? And so we're not doing that as much in San Jose. We're allowing more of those high danger shots. And I with Vasilevsky being elite, he's obviously going to stop the majority of those medium danger ones. 
but he's also going to stop a good majority of the high danger ones. Whereas Jones, being non elite, he's seeing more high danger sh- shots than Vasilevsky is. Mm-hmm. Well, of course his numbers are going to be worse, yeah. right? So I, that's that's kind of just my point on that one. By comparing those two, obviously they're not the same goaltender, but. You know, it, there's two different situations entirely, and it's not just down to the goalie skill level. It's down to the way that the team is playing. Mm-hmm. And during the, I think it was the post game, the last game, uh, Curtis Brown had a good point too that the Sharks are not doing a good job of clearing the net mm-hmm. in front of either goaltender Dell or Jones. So right. they're getting a lot of screenshots coming in, and there's a lot of goals coming in on screenshots where they go down to the butterfly and they have no idea. They know somebody shot it, but they right. can't see it, and they're hoping that it hits them, and it doesn't. So we're seeing a lot of those, too. I think for whatever reason, the Sharks' defense is not doing a good job of clearing out the traffic in front. Yeah, yeah, no, and and, and you could see that because, you know, again, looking at those stats, you could see that Jones had, like, 200 rebounds that he has to deal with, Mm -hmm. and I think Vasilevsky had to deal with 175. I mean, over the however many course of games, that starts adding up, right? So it's it's a big deal. So, you know, again, I, I think that there's a lot to be said for the team that plays in front of Jones, and I'm not just saying that to excuse Jones. I'm saying that because it makes the most sense when you're looking at the stats, not just, say, percentage, goals against average. When you're looking at the deeper stats, it, it makes more sense that there's a bigger issue. And again, and I've said this like in the live, and I said it a couple episodes ago, are Dell and Jones having the worst seasons of their lives at the same time just by coincidence? Or is there maybe a bigger problem that's leading to it? And to me, it, it seems clear that there's a bigger problem, mm-hmm. right? And I think with DeBoer saying, you know, we could really use an extra save here and there or whatever. Um, you can't win those games doing, uh, you know, with an 800 or a 900 save percentage. Is that him necessarily talking to Jones and Dell? Sounds like it is. But when you say that, you know, we need a, a higher save percentage, maybe that means, hey, you guys need to start forcing the play to the outside instead of letting everything come, uh, you know, so close in. Well, maybe did that overtime goal and he keeps yeah. it up the middle and nobody contested him. Yeah. Now, now here's the funny thing on that one is, <laughs> it it was a it was an, a goal that was right up the middle. Yeah. So he's got more net to shoot at, right? At the same time, man, Dell saw that thing coming. There was no screen in front of him. It was a good shot. It was though. a great shot. Yeah. It was a snipe. It hit the corner. Don't get me wrong. Right. Goal scorers score goals, right? I have no problem with that. But there was no screen there. He saw the puck the whole way. And he just got beat. He was in the high slot, uncontested. Yeah, speeding, coming at him. I, I don't. I don't <laughs> want to say I fault Dell for that one no. as much because it was such an elite shot. Sure. If it was like a, a worse shot, if it was low or something, you know, or mm-hmm. or five hole maybe that would be really bad. Right. But getting it in the corner. No, I think and, that's pretty good. And shot. I agree. And this is where you know we talk, start talking about what are considered soft goals. Right, I think from where he shot that, if that was a five-hole goal with no screen, I think that would yeah. be a terrible goal. So and for me, I'm kind of in the same boat. When you start picking the corners, right, then you're talking about being extremely accurate in terms of being a shooter and whatnot. Right? So at that point, especially right up the middle, if you're yeah. off to the side and you're able to kind of angle that net off. But when you're talking right up the gut and he picks a corner on you, it's almost like in soccer. You kind of have to guess one right. way or the other, right? right. Um, you're kind of hoping that you're in the right spot for whichever way he's going to go, and then you need to go ahead and throw that, that arm out and make that save. It's not as drastic as soccer. In soccer, <laughs> you're truly just jumping and guessing, I think. Totally. But, That's yeah. all we do. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. No, it looks like it, too. I used to play goalie. Yeah, between all the flopping and everything. Sniper! Anyway. Um, no, I, I love soccer. No, I don't. Um, <laughs> so anyway... Um, then I had a comment. Again, I spend most of my time fighting on Facebook. Then I had a comment. You can tell. Where someone had said that, uh, you know, then why are we paying him like an elite goaltender? Mm. I said, hmm, that's an interesting um, question. So I took a look, and we're paying him $5.75 million a year. And that just kicked in this season. And that just kicked in this season. That's the point, though. Paying a goalie that has elite stats in the playoffs who got to the Stanley Cup final, 5.75? Mm-hmm. Five, seven, five, I yeah. think that's a pretty decent deal. That's an amazing... I, I mean, I think it's a great deal. Don't get me wrong. Um, here's here's what I will say. Jonathan Quick is getting paid 5.8. And so people look at that and they go, well, Jonathan Quick is an elite goaltender. <laughs> Why couldn't we have a guy like Jonathan Quick? Not necessarily Jonathan Quick, because, right. you know, we don't like him. Right. But, like, if it was a guy like Jonathan Quick, and look at how much he's making, we could pay a guy that does that skilled that amount of money. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Not so fast. It's my little quick pun. Right. Anyway, um... Quick signed that contract in 2013. That was five years ago. So maybe not elite, elite money, but pretty high. Back then. Five years ago, that was pretty good money for a goaltender to be making. 
So now you've got Martin Jones in 2018 just kicked in, right? It's not like he's he's had this contract going for a few years and gosh, we paid him 5.75 when that was kind of, you know, right. a, a good amount for a goalie. No, we're we're paying him at this day and age where that's probably what you're going to end up spending on a good goalie. A starter in the NHL, yeah, you're probably going to pay him about that much, right? Yeah, Some of that you so. trust at least. Well, we'll see this summer when Bobrovsky gets signed, yeah. right? wherever he goes because he's a free agent <laughs> he's going to kind of set the tone and, and the market for yeah a elite goalie getting signed somewhere well and it's it's funny you bring him up because Rene Bobrovsky Rask they're all currently making about seven million dollars right mm -hmm. but I mean when they come up for another contract like Bob for instance right I mean, he's going to get paid you think so I think so I think he gets paid. Not around paid. the same? You think no, I think he gets paid. All right. Yeah. I mean, this is this is a guy who I consider to be an elite goaltender well, in the league. Maybe and, after this playoffs, yeah. we'll see how he does. But let's look at some he's of he's never won a series. <laughs> <laughs> let's, and again, there's team defense to be involved in that as well. But, and I understand your point. If you're an elite goaltender, you should be able to steal a series. I got gotcha. you. But if your team's not scoring in front of you, how you, you can't score For a goal yourself. For $5 million? Dollars? <laughs> That's fine. For a 7 8? No, you need okay. to win a series. Fair. How about for a 10? Ten and oh, a half. You should be winning the cup. Carey Price. Yeah. Right. Then you've got uh, Lundqvist. I think is at eight point five or eight point seven. Your defense when you do that. And that's also part of my point. Is I we've, hate. We talked about this yeah. before. There's two ways, two thoughts of doing it. Right. You pay an elite goaltender a yeah. lot of money, or you pay defense, which can do more and give you more offense, kind of what the Sharks do. And you pay a, a decent goalie yeah. a good amount of money. Right. And when you look at the other guys that we've talked about like the elite guys mm -hmm. who haven't been paid yet and that's the thing oh this Murray he doesn't cost that much Gibson he didn't cost that much yeah because they're coming they're, they're all of the guys we're talking about there are RFAs yeah. Vasilevsky RFA yep. not getting paid a whole heck of a lot right now right now now what happens when they need to get paid believe me all three of those guys are getting big bucks huge well, look, bucks look what Pittsburgh got lucky yeah they had Marc-Andre Fleury who was a good goalie won a cup Mm -hmm. One with him, mm -hmm. right? Then they had Murray come up and kind of outplay him. Yeah, took over as a starter role, and they won two cups with Murray. Yep, they got lucky because Murray was on a very uh, team friendly <laughs> cap, very team friendly. Yeah, so they could they were they could afford to get rid of Flurry and yeah. continue to be a strong team. Right. Um, then they just got lucky. Where Tampa Bay, how are they <laughs> going to pay him? How are they going to keep Vasilevsky and the team that they have? Yeah. Um, look at the Rangers, right? Lungfist took a big chunk of that money and look at him now. Yeah. They can't really, they can't hold, uh, they're just not good. See, so. and, and this is where, like, I start thinking about, you know, paying one player. I don't care if it's a goaltender or Connor McDavid or, or you Eric, know, Carlson. Eric Carlson. If you pay one player a ton of money, the money that he's worth and the money that he's going to get on the open market, is it better for your team? Or is it more detrimental it to your team? It kind of handcuffs you a little bit. It does handcuff you a lot. Like, yeah. think about the guys that we're going to have to let walk just to be able to sign Eric Carlson. Now, Eric Carlson makes our team a very good team. Are we still a very good team if we have Pavelski walk, if we can't afford to sign you know, a, a Jonas Donsko and we have to plug in some fourth liner on the third line? It, you know what I'm saying? We'll so, get into that this summer. Yeah, but there's <laughs> obviously, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, there's more to consider there. Right. But anyway, so uh, again, my point with those guys that they're going to get paid, it's not that they're just going to make a ton of money. It's that when you look at what you're paying Jones, 5.75, and you guess that maybe Vasilevsky, if he if he goes really far in the playoffs here, I mean, he may want to get close to Carey Price money. Right. We don't know. I mean, probably over Henrik Lundqvist, I would guess, right? So would you want to pay a goaltender $9 million to be elite and then have to have the rest of your team kind of maybe not quite so hot? Because that's the position that we're in right now. Or would you rather pay Martin Jones 5.75 and let's just not call that elite money because it ain't, right? Right. I mean, to me, 5.75 for Martin Jones is not elite money. I think it's a good deal. Yeah, I think for it's a good deal. For what you're getting from it, I think it's good. Yeah. So in summary of all that, I think the main thing, the, the main takeaway there is, again, Martin Jones is not an elite goaltender. We put him in situations where you would want an elite goaltender to make those saves. And the fix for that isn't to hope and pray and wish and keep <laughs> poking and prodding at him and hoping that all of a sudden he blossoms like a butterfly into an elite goaltender. It ain't going to happen that way. So you have what you have in Jones, right? That's your guy, whether you like it or not. How do you make him better? You push the play to the outside. You keep out of those high danger areas as mm -hmm. best you can defensively, right? You keep them to the medium danger, the low danger as best you can. You limit the amount of rebounds. You Basically, you play good team defense in front of the guy. 
And you have to do that because, again, he's not an elite guy. With a guy like Vasilevsky, yeah, maybe you can get away with that. Maybe you can get away with the, the risk-reward Brent Burns running gun style right. offense that Tampa Bay likes to play. That's how Vegas plays. Right? Because they have Mark andre Fleury, who is very unorthodox in, in some of his saves, very aggressive, yeah. too. Um, I think that's why Vegas has success, because they have a goalie back there who can do that. Yeah. And if you look at their defense, it's not a very good defense. They're not a very good puck-moving defense. They like to just chip the puck out and kind of like what I feel like Anaheim used to do this years ago. They would just bank it off the glass and get it out of the zone yeah. instead of trying to play it like the Sharks do, playing it to the sticks and, and possessing and all that. They just right. get rid of it. As soon as you see it, get rid of it. As yeah. soon as you see it, get rid of it. Yeah. So it's very it's annoying and it's frustrating mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's boring to me. I think it's just <laughs> boring hockey. So for, I guess, the, the peacekeeping, if you will, okay, here's what I'm, I'm going to say. I'm going to say that you guys are right. Martin Jones is not playing up to the, your expectations, okay? He's not an elite goaltender, but at the same time, the crowd that's saying, hey, you know, team defense is not playing well in front of him, you guys are also right. So it's a combination of the two. I think if we light a fire under Martin Jones' butt, in which Pete DeBoer may be doing with that, that uh, not tweet, but the, the right. whatever he said to, to Paul Gackle and whoever else, all the media folks. Um, and I think if the, the Sharks tighten down on those those high danger chances and those rebounds and whatnot and clear those out better, I think that Martin Jones is going to be good enough for us to make a good deep run. Yep. So that's my whole take on it. I don't well, know. Do you have anything else? Speaking you of deep runs, okay, just, go ahead. Just real quick, I'm going to throw this <laughs> up there. Everyone keeps talking about Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay, Tampa yeah. Bay, right? Tampa Bay has a 24% chance of winning a cup. That yeah. means 76% chance they're not going to win a Stanley Cup. Okay. How do you think their fans are going to feel <laughs> if they don't win a Stanley Cup this year, right? Oh, yeah. It's going to be nuts. Now, the Sharks have an 8% chance of winning yeah. the Cup. What do you think Calgary's chance is? It's probably six, eight percent. Six, six percent. They're ahead of us in the standings, <laughs> yet they're a lower, lower percentage of chance of winning the cup. I wonder how they do those percentages, though. I don't really know. Yeah. This is off the athletic as well, but um, <laughs> it, it's just it's interesting because there's only obviously there's only it, it's Highlander. There can only yeah. be one, right? So <laughs> who knows what's going to happen? I still am in the boat that I don't think Tampa Bay gets to the finals. I'm more disappointed that you didn't get the Marvel reference and you're throwing <laughs> Highlander references out there. Come on, man. What was that? You knew what I was talking Check about. Check yourself, son. Come on now. But you knew what I was talking about. <laughs> anyway, uh, so right. should we jump forward to the let's weekend review jump. here? Uh, sure. Okay, let's, okay, so weekend review. We'll make review. this brief. We will make this very brief. <laughs> Uh, basically, it was it was not good. I mean, really, we had three games. We played uh, the Vegas Golden Knights, LA Kings, Anaheim Ducks. Two of them are actually fairly close. One was an empty netter. One was overtime. But the Vegas game, ugh, yeah. that was just kind of gross. That was well, first game without Pavelski, I believe. Yeah. And uh, also, who else was out? Kutcher? Did he? Mm -hmm. No, he he made that game, but he missed the LA game. Did he? Yeah, because he had the flu. Okay. Um, but I. Missing your captain the first game, yeah. uh, you kind of know that you're not going to be winning the division at that point. I think, I think they kind of were like, okay, and it, it was also like, I I, I have to look it up, but um, they had a bunch of every other day I had a game, right? And yeah. that was the last game before they had the break between that and LA. So okay. I think part of it was fatigue, missing some players. Some players, you know, maybe they were sick, they had the flu, but they still played. Yeah, just not as bad as as Couture was. Yeah, in so. I think they're just dealing with a lot, and Vegas wasn't. And Vegas had a big break, too. I put this up on Twitter the other day, too. Um, if you look at Vegas' schedule, they had a big break before they played. Okay. They, the Sharks was a third game in four nights for them, but before that, they had a full week off. Almost a full week off. Okay. So they had a huge break, whereas the Sharks were the other way around. They were finishing up their long break, or long play, and mm -hmm. then had a break between that and the LA game. Yeah. Um, I, I, it, I'm not trying to come up with a bunch of excuses. They played awful. Well, you're doing a good job of it. So. <laughs> they played awful. We were expecting to get five of six points. <laughs> yeah, last we lost week. five of six points. We did. We were kind of right. Sure. Just in a backwards, bizarre right. world kind of way. Right. So <laughs> one point for the Sharks last week. It was a brutal week. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, again, all things said, look, this isn't a death sentence. Right. right. Okay, we right. lost the Vegas Golden Knights and we lost big. It was one game. Let's relax, right? Well, again, we're missing guys. Again, not an excuse. But 
when playoffs hit, who knows? Maybe they're going to have an injury of their own. I don't want to wish ill on anyone because <laughs> I've done that before and it worked. Mark Andre Fleury. Easy now. Sorry. I didn't say that. He did. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, but we never know. I mean, we've gone through some injury bugs. I know the flu was going around. You didn't hear about Dell having the flu, but he had it. I heard mm-hmm. him talk about it at, at a practice on the way out. He was going to sign something or get close to somebody for a pitcher. And he's like, ah, you probably shouldn't because I'm kind of battling Great. the flu right so now. So that's just ripping through the locker room. Well, right that, and that's just it, right? So you don't, it, there are injuries, injuries, flu, that you don't hear about, right? And Dell was one of them. But, I mean, I'm sure there's other guys in the room that are dealing with it too, but you don't, you just don't hear about it. Yeah. So, um, again, not a death sentence. And I think, you know, there's a lot of fan overreaction. Again, I'm a fan too, and I want to see my team win. But at the end of the day, you know, there's, there's playoffs that's going to happen after this. Who really cares where we end up during the last little stretch of the regular season here? We're not going to take first unless Calgary, like you said, poops the bed. Um, <laughs> and if they do, okay, hey, that's great. But, I mean, again, you're going to have to fight through everybody anyway to get to the to the Stanley Cup. There's no easy road to the Stanley Once Cup. you hit the, the Cup final, let's say it's Tampa Bay, does it really matter if you beat Minnesota or if you beat Vegas in round one? You don't even remember round one when you exactly. get there. Are you kidding me? So uh, let's just get there first, right? So, again, not a death sentence. Now, moving on from that game, we had the back-to-back in SoCal. We had L.A. first, and then we had Anaheim. The L.A. game was closer than the score appeared because yeah. it was an empty net goal at the end there. So it was mm-hmm. like, what, 4-2? to 4-2, so yeah. Empty netter. So it was really 3-2. Mm-hmm. Um, it was tight. It was close. Um, L.A. came to play. They wanted to play the spoiler, and they, they got it. That's it. It's an easy game for them to get up to because I think I'm pretty sure that LA Kings hate the Sharks, <laughs> especially considering how their season is going. Right. So the little games that they have to look forward to, one of them is definitely going to be against San Jose. Right. Um, you could say the same about Anaheim the next night too. Sure. I think they were they were more up for the game. The Sharks were on a back to back. That game was closer. They went to overtime. Um, I thought it was great when Braun tied the game. That up, was man. awesome. That blast coming through, and I'm like, oh, it's a second. Second goal of the yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he needed that. The team needed it. I'm pretty sure it sparked the team. Yeah. Uh, it's just unfortunate that the defensive collapse in overtime ended it. Yeah. But again, it's you can't really that kind of overtime is not going to be the kind of overtime it'll be in the playoffs. Correct. So it it doesn't really uh, whatever. They yeah. All the point. skills competition stuff that you see in the regular season is all for naught. Right. In, in I'm, playoffs, I'm still so. happier seeing. I, I'm happy. Losing in overtime when you were losing in regulation yeah. and you tie it. Yeah. So they got a point, yeah. almost like they stole a point. Yeah. So I'm happy that they got a point. Now you see it the other way around and it feels like you you lost a point, yep. right? You had two in the bag, they came back and tied it, and then they scored. Um, so yeah, definitely nice to basically come from behind, uh, tie it up, and then even though you lose it, you still pulled a point out of mm-hmm. out of a hat that you shouldn't have been pulling a point out of. So And by the way, that Justin Braun uh, uh, slap shot that he yeah. put... It, it was reminiscent of Burns. There was a, a shot. I can't remember exactly when it was, but there was a pass when, when Burnsy was still playing as a forward. Jumbo passed it in the slot, and Burns was like in the blue paint, and he <laughs> one times this thing as if he was at the blue line, <laughs> and it. Just, I thought it was gonna go through the net. I mean, he just pounded this thing, and yeah. there was no reason to shoot the puck that hard. Just just you know, a little just tap would be good. But yeah, oh my god, he had to make sure and rip the net. And that's what it reminded me of. Brawny really ripped this yeah, shot, he man. Did. He did not. He didn't wait at all. He just yeah. pumped it in. That was that was awesome. He hit it so hard that I think if uh, Gibson got his hand on the glove or his glove on the puck, would've it would have gone into the into the <laughs> goal and scored the goal. We will never know. Okay, yeah. so jumping ahead now, uh, next week we've got four games. Four games. Okay. We got uh, so tomorrow, t- tomorrow or tonight, today, yeah. today. Okay, playing Detroit, mm-hmm. which is always a great game. <sighs> There's gonna be lots of Detroit fans as usual in the arena. Um, Detroit's not. It, they're they're an okay team. Mm-hmm. They're not they're not great. They're still kind of young. They're kind of rebuilding. They're kind of in that middle phase of. We're kind of rebuilding, but we still have some <laughs> decent players left over. But yeah. they did they traded Nyquist, so maybe it'll be a good game for Nyquist. Um, so is that is that in Detroit or is that at home? I think it's at home. I think it's at home, right? Yeah, because they're we doing have four home games. This yeah, week. yeah, okay. So we, we're playing Detroit Monday, mm-hmm. then we're playing Chicago on Thursday. All right. So it's a Chicago game. Chicago's been playing lights <laughs> out kind of lately. That's that's not a good two games they, for for people in the arena because Detroit travels well, Chicago travels well too. Yeah, that's true. It's a pain. Yep. Yeah. So there's gonna be a lot of um, other fans there, especially well Monday night. Everyone hates Monday night games. They're just yeah. Like a, a, a hockey game on Monday night is just weird. It's usually Thursday and Saturday and Thursday and Saturday. Okay. So, right. Sure. Even Tuesdays like are better than Mondays. Yeah. I think as long as it's not like a 1 p.m. game, I'm okay with whatever day it is. 
I think it's yeah. the time that goofs me up more than anything else. Yeah, but Mondays you're just like, ugh, it's Monday. <laughs> ugh, I have to Do you go think to hockey game. players get a case of the Mondays? Uh, I don't think so. No, it's not the players, it's the fans. Okay, fine. The fans that aren't going oh, to the okay. games. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Plus, you're there's okay. four home games this week. If you're a season ticket holder, you're like, yeah. oh, <laughs> four games, I'm tired of being at the arena. Right? Like, uh, I wouldn't. That's me. Right. Anyway, Detroit, uh, then Chicago. Then Chicago. What are you looking for out of uh, these games? I'm, I'm obviously we're looking for for a bounce back here. I, I think uh, I think the Sharks got a good ripping from the coach. Uh, I think they were doing a bunch of drills and, and stuff, weren't they, the other night? Oh, uh, I, the last practice that I went to, I heard Pete um, kind of giving it to the boys, like really, like, hey, if you're not doing this drill exactly right, I'm gonna let you know about it. Yeah. And you know, they usually they're loose and they're laughing, and they're having fun and everything and and, every, and all that, but um, this time. So last time around, man, it yeah. was uh, it was kind of loose a little bit. Then Pete stepped out there, and then they did the first little drill, and Pete was like, "No, he was like screaming at him." And I was like, "Okay, we're not having fun anymore." And just down to business, and <laughs> they just put their heads down and did the drills. And yeah, it was a very different tone than what I'm used to going to the yeah. practices for sure. It was it was uh, a little different. That's what happens when you're on a losing streak. Yeah, so hopefully they pull themselves out of it with those two games. Then after that, we're going another back to back. Yep. And Aren't we done with these yet? It's Vegas and Calgary. Oh, it's yeah. probably the toughest. Yeah. Back to back. Yeah. Uh, Vegas on Saturday, and that's a 6 p.m. game, which is kind of odd. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's because it's going to be on national TV or something. It should be. Mm. It's going to be a great game. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be a tough game, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and then Sunday at 5 p.m., another odd Weird. time, yeah. uh, against Calgary, which is going to be a brutal game just yeah. because it's a back to back after playing. A hard-fought game against the Knights. Yeah, uh, we're really going to see where we end up in the standings th- after this week. Yeah, if we can string together four wins, I think Calgary is going to be looking behind them, getting a little scared. Yeah, especially if we beat them in regulation on Sunday. If we get four wins, I don't know that Calgary's looking behind them anymore. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Ahead. Depends on who they're playing. But you know, those games that we're playing, Calgary, we're playing Vegas. Those are poor four. Wow, four-point swings. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you for watching me this far. Uh, so, uh, yeah, no, those are four-point swings, you know. Uh, if you, you lose that game, they go up two and they gain ground. If, if you win that game, you go up two and, and you've get, made that, that gap even bigger, right? Yep. So it's a big, big uh, weekend there for the Sharks up against two teams that are right behind, right ahead. You know, there's really nothing saying that Vegas can't surpass us, and there's nothing saying that we can't surpass Calgary. I know Kurz was out there saying <laughs> we're not beating this team. Guys, we're not taking first. But you just never know. Look at the Sharks right now: eight or seven game win streak, and then an eight game or a six game losing streak. Yeah. I mean, who had that one written up, right? So you, you just never know. We might jump on the horse here. We got seven games to go. Four of them right here at home in a row. That's the, that's the nice thing about it. We're not traveling for any of this back on the back to back. Right. So who knows? We we might come out ahead after this week. Could be the case. So yeah. keep your fingers crossed, guys. We get four wins. There's gonna be a completely different tone online. Oh yeah, people this week. Oh, we're, we're winning. <laughs> we're winning the cup. <laughs> we're winning the cup. We've we're gonna, already won the cup. We're gonna sweep Vegas yeah. and then sweep Calgary and then go on to yeah. You know, <laughs> the emotions are just so high and so low. Is it is it that the same people are high and then low, or is it that the pessimists are quiet when we're winning and then I don't know the, they're loud when we're not winning and Could, you know what I mean? I think it's different people. Is it different people that are saying yeah. it, or is it this, everybody just kind of goes up and down? Yeah, that's an emotional roller coaster. Yes. If you're if you're the one person going up and down, that's that's wow. Good luck to you and your blood pressure. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that's all of the the games that are coming up. Gosh, after this, there's only three more games left. Yep. We're at the end of the season here, guys. We are. My goodness, it's amazing. To think how we're, I mean, <laughs> for this show, really. Right. Well, well, then we we're started going to back. Playoffs. Then we go playoffs. Yes, but I mean, just thinking for this show, even. I mean, then the, gosh, the real season starts. Yeah, the real season starts. I still don't know what we're gonna do oh, for. We're for talking about our beards. Oh yeah, that's true. We're talking about the beards. That was that was the other thing I wanted to bring up. Okay, yeah. Right. So um, I have a question for you guys. Now I've, I saw a Facebook poll. I think is what it was, and someone was saying, "So when do you shave your beard? Do you shave it when you clinch? No. Do you, or start shave it so you can start growing it? Do you shave it so that when you clinch?" Do you shave it uh, as soon as the regular season is over, or do you shave it for game one? And so you've got an opinion. I think game one. Okay. Um, you should be clean shaved for game one, and then it starts to grow and grow okay. and grow. And then all of a sudden, you are Brent Burns or Joe Thornton. <laughs> and goes, Hopefully. Wow, you've been in the playoffs a long yeah, time. Yeah. And I go, I know, I'm going to win the cup. <laughs> Me, personally. You? Right. Yeah, right. Me and my beard. 
Good for you. <laughs> so I, I'm kind of of the mind where I'm thinking I'm to shave it right at the end of the regular season because that is the end and playoffs technically start yeah. after the end of the season. I used to do that. I don't think it's a big deal because okay. it's usually by the end of the season, it's only like a day or two yeah, when yeah. they start. That's true. So it's That's not true. a huge difference. Not yeah. like where they clinch and it's like a three week difference, yeah. right? That's a little ridiculous. So I'm thinking of, of maybe doing something a little special for that. I know last time we had the Movember and we had the, I grew the mustache oh, and then so that was gross. horrible. So gross. Um, it, look for the Kevin Kerr's interview and then you'll see that, that week of, of episodes or and Dan's that interview. month of episodes. Yeah. yeah. Where it was, oh my gosh. <laughs> so anyway, um, so I think we might try to do something special. I have to talk with a few people and if we can get something uh, put together, then great. Otherwise maybe we'll just do something special just on the show. It doesn't matter. But um, yeah, so uh, like a straight razor yeah well, well i don't know we'll see how it goes so um there's that but anyway um there was there was one other thing that we wanted to bring up or no uh yes we're gonna have a special episode this week yes uh look for something to come out on either thursday or friday don't know which day uh but we're gonna have a special episode this week uh and i don't want to spoil it you don't, don't want to say a special it's just special we're gonna episode? have an interview okay with well, somebody. a special guest a special guest yeah on the set right here on the set just like we've done with everybody else and right it's going to be well not navi navi we were in the arena but right. that was fun too so in any case uh gosh i guess that's that's it then we're all wrapped up yep be sure to subscribe if you haven't already there you go uh, be sure to like the video be sure to check out our store if you'd like to help support the show uh here we'll put the link right here and you can go check out our swag which we have you're really good about pointing where Thank i don't you. know how you know that every time it's amazing uh, it's yeah. magic magical t-shirts hats stickers Everything helps. It's great. Yeah, uh, and again, I, I brought this up in the live. We needed expo markers at one point, and somebody gave us <laughs> 10 bucks during the super chat. Yeah. That funded our expo markers. Right. So yeah. uh, thank you for that. Uh, gosh, I guess that's it. So um, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, please hit us up on all the socials, you know, Facebook and Twitter. We're on at the Fin Factor, and Instagram is at Fin Factor. We're on Reddit. We're on Discord. We're everywhere, so you can get a hold of us. And uh, I guess that's all. So thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate your comments. Please leave yep. some. That'd be great. And we will see you next week. Next week. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.